what I want to actually go over before we start talking about particle physics is one of the tools we use to illustrate interactions. So just so that you have reference to the written material, um, if you are looking for, well, where is all this written up? In your textbook, it's, it's actually in uh, chapter 11, section 5, where it talks about standard model, because this is how we illustrate things. It's the thing called the Feynman diagram, and this is an example of a Feynman diagram. Um, and I will kind of explain what all those lines are supposed to mean. Um, but let me start from there. I, I, um, uh, yeah, because it's uh, sort of, um, yeah, it, so this is uh, the, it's the free body diagram of particle physics. So when we are doing mechanics, one of the earliest things in physics 4A, one of the earliest things you introduce is the free body diagram so that you have, have a way of illustrating the system you are dealing with. This Feynman diagram is a way to illustrate the interaction you are analyzing so that you can, uh, you know, you can be, you don't have to be as worthy in describing what it is you are analyzing. So um, let me just, I forgot to draw a line here. So let me talk a little bit about Feynman diagram. Um, by the way, this is obviously named after a person. How many here know about Richard Feynman? Have heard of Richard Feynman? It's, um, he worked on the Manhattan Project. He's dead. He died in like in the 80s. Um, he worked on the Manhattan Project, the A-bomb, as a graduate student, and uh, he won Nobel Prize on something. I guess he's a path integral method of something. Um, and he was a professor at Caltech, I guess, until he retired and died. <laughs> so the reason I bring your attention to this particular name, I don't often do that, is because he's a, probably one of the best science communicators, um, even until today. So if you are just a, so he's known for some of the publications that's meant to be accessible to general public. Um, so I guess the most, probably the best known one is, surely you are joking, Mr. Feynman. Um, so it's uh, meant, meant for people who have no training in physics. So it's <laughs> certainly accessible to you. And um, the other writing that he is known for, which is really good um, reading for physics and engineering student is uh, physics, uh, I guess we call it Feynman lectures on physics. What it is is these Feynman lectures on physics, it covers in three volumes, it covers the same physics we cover in physics 4A through 4C, but in a very non-traditional order because they cover radiation and heat in the first volume. And I would say, you know, if you feel like you understood the physics well enough, this will help deepen your understanding because the way he covers is different from the standard approach. Um, I remember as, a, wow, did I do it as undergrad? Reading through volume one, one summer, and it helped me understand a lot of things that I didn't quite understand fully. So, um, so yeah, I just wanted to bring your attention to that because he's one of the best science communicators. I think it, uh, I made it no secret of uh, me being quite, uh, dismissive of a lot of popular science uh, writings and stuff out there. Because even people who are actual physicists, like Brian Greene, a lot of his stuff is just garbage. Um, a lot of Nova series is just garbage because they've dumbed down the physics so much that whatever it is they're communicating is no longer physics. But Feynman doesn't do that. So a lot of his stuff, whether it's meant for lay people or you know people not trained in physics and engineering, or if it's meant for physics students, it's uh, pretty good. So. Um, so Feynman diagram, what it is, uh, so it's a tool to analyze interactions. And even though it can be used to analyze uh, many different types of interactions, most of the interactions that, um, that can be analyzed using Feynman diagrams they are going to be analyzed as collisions. As in, you imagine two particles coming together, they collide, and then they, something happens. So, um, 
i'm pretty sure that's in the old style. i thought time access was horizontal these days. yeah i'm pretty sure that's the old style. can i, i wonder if i can wait, no. Mm. sorry i don't know how to yeah, let's not. Um, so, um, so this is how you can imagine it. So this diagram is illustrating collision between two electrons. So an electron comes in, so electron one comes in, electron two comes in, they somehow interact with each other. We would say um, right now by Coulomb repulsion, and they repel each other, and electron one goes different way, electron two goes different way. Um, so that's the, that's the basic idea. But what I want to highlight is that this is um, it's a schematic diagram. It's not meant to illustrate the actual, um, actual paths of particles. For example, if this is an electron, and if this is a positively charged particle, like a positron that we'll talk about later, we will still draw it the exact same way even though two, an electron and a positron would attract to each other rather than repel, we would still draw it the exact same way because it's only a schematic diagram. It's not showing you the actual particle paths. So uh, let me just uh, start out you with some examples, I guess. Um, let me start you with an example that will be more familiar to you because these are examples we have mentioned when we were doing special relativity. So one of the, I think, homework problems or something that you have seen. One of the examples is in relativity, let's say you have two photons coming together, collide to make a single particle of some mass m. Right? So uh, before, before Feynman diagram, this is how we drew them. So I guess, let me just call it regular diagram. And with a regular diagram, there are no rules. I, you just uh, draw whatever it is you want to draw. So you do draw, well, uh, there's a photon coming in and another photon coming in, they collide and make some particle of mass m. That's how you may, might draw it, right? Different people will draw it differently and that's fine. So in a Feynman diagram, this is how I would draw it. So in a Feynman diagram, there are some, oh, sorry, I don't know why, who keeps unscrewing my pants? Um, This happens once every class, right? <laughs> so in a Feynman diagram, um, one of the rules is you, for known particles, like photon is a known particle. There are very specific ways of drawing their lines so that just by looking at the diagram, you know what kind of particle is. In fact, the way it's drawn here, is meant to represent that. Photon is supposed to be drawn like a sinusoidal wave. You can kind of see why, right? It's, it's like a circuit diagram. You know, in a circuit diagram, the inductors are drawn as coils because that's how most inductors are. It's some kind of coil. So when you are drawing a photon line, you are trying to represent an interaction that involves a photon. You draw it as a squiggly line. That's meant to be like a sinusoidal wave. So this particular interaction as a Feynman diagram will be drawn as, um, I guess, do I want to use, no, I want to use blue. Um, you'd, okay, so I have a photon coming in. So here's one photon. And here's another photon coming in, second photon. And they interact at a vertex. Um, the vertex is what represents a, um, First, it's what represents interaction. And out of that interaction comes a single particle that is particle of mass m. And you know, if you want to be extra clear, you can label the lines. Photon labels are less than necessary, but I can still label them. There's nothing prohibiting me from doing that. And, um, and I guess while this is not strictly required, you can, um, there's a traditional way of organizing it. The traditional way of organizing it is you use one of the two axes. 
um, either the vertical or horizontal. I'm just going to use the horizontal one. That's what I think I'm supposed to be used to. Um, so I'm going to use the horizontal axis to illustrate passage of time. But once again, it's in a strictly schematic sense. So by letting the horizontal axis represent passage of time, what I'm really saying is that what's on my left side is the initial state, and what's on the right side is the final state. Because yeah. you know, in this regular diagram, it's maybe, well, maybe it's not so unclear. It's not necessarily clear if I started out with this or if I ended up with this. But in this Feynman diagram, just the orientation of diagram alone says, well, I came in with two photons, and I have an outgoing uh, single particle of mass m. Good. So this is a kind of basic way Feynman diagram is supposed to be drawn. And um, let me fess up to one thing. This is actually a wrong Feynman diagram. Uh, if you are to look at real Feynman diagrams, you will never find uh, Feynman, never? Ever? Yeah, you will never ever find a Feynman diagram, a portion of a Feynman diagram that looks like this. And there's a big reason why. Let me explain why. Um, and this matches with what I said earlier in class at some point, that energy conservation is absolutely held. It, it's never violated. And it's in this context I was referring to. So all the conservation laws we know, they are held, they are, um, they are enforced at each vertex. Each vertex enforces all required conservation laws. 